Greetings and salutations and welcome to Shivers. Shivers is an old uh, point and click horror game appropriate for this uh, this month of October. And indeed, uh, for this op this month, I intend that this game replace um, Ultima, Ultima 7 that is, as uh, our, my weekly stream. I wanted something nice and spooky for the month. Now, uh, before I begin, let me just arrange some things a little bit. Because I'm playing this in a slightly unusual manner. You see, Shivers runs at, in, at 640 by 480, and I don't see, haven't seemed to, I haven't managed to find a way to um, scale it up nicely, um, or more accurately, the one way that I did find refused to work. Um, so what I'm actually doing is I'm scaling it in OBS, which is why you're hopefully seeing this um, at a nice high resolution, um, and. Where was I? Uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, scaling this in OBS, and I'm looking at that while I play, so that it takes up more or less my whole screen. However, that doesn't capture the that doesn't transfer the mouse control to the game. So I actually have the game on another monitor, and I'm mo technically moving the mouse in that monitor. And of course, that um, well, and usually that monitor holds my Twitch stream. Um, and in fact it does in this case too. So I was just maneuvering things a bit such that um, I can see the game on one screen, chat on another screen, and still have the game itself playing beside. So let me tweet out that I'm live. There we go. Switch back to that. Switch back to this. And let us begin. <laughs> I like this guy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Perhaps you would like to name your game. I would thank you, mysterious voice. Uh, I am going to name it in my usual tradition. In my my usual tradition of naming things for which I don't have a particular um, reason to, well, a particular name in mind. There we go. Uh, now a game of this name already exists because I did some testing earlier. So let's overwrite it and begin anew. Sorry if it's a bit loud, I'm going to turn down the volume presently. The stair was kind of your idea, you know. But I'm glad I'm me out here and not you in there. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've heard those same loving words before. Like the time you guys dared me to spend the night at that cemetery. <laughs> you know, if you die in the museum tonight, I'll make sure she gives a eulogy at your funeral. We never would have made you spend the night here if you hadn't uh, talked about this place so much. Yeah, we thought you'd been kind of well obsessed, thinking you were hearing voices and stuff coming from the museum and all. <laughs> Concerning? For me. Hey, you know, maybe they're the voices of those kids who disappeared 15 years ago. Dun, dun, dun. I found the bodies. Or the killer. Yeah. And my sister, you know, Julie, the one in college, says Professor Windleduck went insane. He viciously murdered them and then buried their bodies in the basement of the museum. Uh huh. Well, what if he's hiding in that creepy museum right now, just waiting for another victim? Yeah. And the ghost of his victims are calling out, <laughs> warning you. <laughs> ring, ring. Hello? I think it's for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm sorry to think maybe he's not crazy. That was just a dog howling. There was something more than that. Well, I didn't hear anything. Of course you didn't. This place is just getting us all spooked. Uh-huh. Getting you spooked you sure doesn't you produce actual coherent voices, I don't think. But of course, if you did, you'd probably never live down the chicken jumps. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> You'll be all right. Come on, I don't want to be late for the movie. We'll be back at dawn to let you out. Bye-bye. Bye. See ya. Later. Peace. So 
So, after that nice little bit of 90s FMV, we're into the game. Uh, now, first things first, as I said, let me open up the options here and turn the volume down because that was awfully loud. Sorry about that. In fact, in retrospect, I probably should have turned down the stream volume beforehand, but oh well. Uh, so let's just make sure that that saves. Uh, save and play. Okay. Are there any other options that I want? Let's see. Flashback. I think this is how we play, how we replay any uh, what's it cutscenes that we might have seen. Ah, text on. We probably want that. There we go. Uh, good. Uh, let's just save again. I don't know whether you have to save to keep your settings, but let's play it save, so to speak. Right, in this green bar at the bottom, that's our life, because there is danger. That's our life, our life force, I suppose. Our health, in other words. Because there is danger in this game. But, it is overall a point and click. The R. Oh. And this is their mail slot. Okay. You know what? I would actually quite like a mail slot like this. From Whitney and Son Limited, 1481 Wethershire Street, London, England. So I suppose that's probably Wethershire or something like that. Sir Hubert Windlenot, Museum of the Strange and Unusual, uh, Route 57, Mount Pleasant, somewhere or another, something that ends in 93. Um, oh. <clears throat> Dear Hubert, the firm of Whitney & Son Limited has handled the legal and financial affairs of the Windlenoss for 256 years, always in a discreet and trustworthy manner. In the tradition of Whitney & Son, James, my eldest, will continue serving you when I retire from the firm in a fortnight. He and Geoffrey often played together as children, so I'm sure you'll remember him. James and I were pleased to attend Geoffrey's wedding in London last April and were surprised not to see you there. The Countess responded quite bitterly when asked about you. I tried to smooth things over by making a sizable financial endowment of the happy couple on your behalf. It puzzles your family and old friends as to why we have not heard from you for over four years, but we assume the museum keeps you busy. I will not bother you further. However, in my absence, if the firm fails to live up to your expectations, let me know personally. Your servant and friend, Joseph P. Whitney. This is a nice... A nice bitmap um, signature there. Hmm. So the person who runs this place hasn't been seen or heard from in four years. And there's a number 29 here. I don't know whether that's relevant. Hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, this allows us to go up. Very old fashioned uh, point and click interface. Well, let us begin, I think, by trying the front door. This, as you can see, is Professor Windlenot's Museum of the Strange and Unusual. This way it says, that way it says, more or less, opening soon. You won't believe your eyes, I think that says. Well, will we believe our eyes? We will see. Up the stairs, very red stairs. Can't interact with this. Uh, quite a long staircase, too. Hmm. Wow, it is quite a, you have to go quite a way to get to the front door of this place. Ah, and here we are, the front door. Hmm, I think it's locked. Professor Windlenot's Museum of the Strange and Unusual. Unfortunately, the museum is still preparing exhibits and hopes you will visit when we open sometime in the near future. Okay. You know, you'll see it better once we get inside, but honestly, I think this is the sort of museum that I would actually love to visit, minus the you know evil spirits and all of that. Um, and, you know, if actually open. Although, honestly, exploring in an abandoned museum could be quite fun. Uh, but anyway, uh, presuming it were open and active. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder whether that's relevant. Uh, I am going to print, print screen that quickly, just to be on the safe side. 
Interesting. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, glad I spotted that. Uh, greetings, uh, Ravok. Am I pronouncing that correctly? We're still trying to get into the place, so there shouldn't be too much shivering just yet. Okay. Ah, excellent. I'm glad I do pronounce it correctly. So yes, so we've just been um, put here on a dare, basically. Um, we appear to be a teenager of some sort, um, and our friends have uh, brought us to the museum. Um, if I can find the right place to click, left us here at the front gate um, to spend the night in this abandoned museum, which apparently we've been talking a lot about, and we've apparently been hearing voices coming from it. Hmm, interesting. Again, I'm going to print screen this in case there's something of interest, something uh, you know, useful for a puzzle. A dare, that's how it always starts. Indeed, Ravok, indeed. And another interesting symbol, yes. Ooh, nice view of the museum. We'll get in there in due course, I do believe. Presumably I can solve the puzzles to get us in. Uh, and we've already heard some spooky voices. Uh, but for now, there's a nice bench to sit on with another symbol by the looks of it. Uh, can we not? Oh, I'm a little disappointed that we can't turn around and look at the lake from there. Oh, hello. Yet another symbol. There are quite a few of these. Interesting, interesting. You can see uh, lots of this old, good old fashioned 90s um, CGI. Uh, do have a little bit of a soft spot for it. Uh, it is um, an art style from my childhood, after all. Some nice standing stones, appropriate for a museum of the strange and unusual. Uh, some dogs, by the sounds of it. Ah, and a machine. Okay, white dots, black dots, and a numeric code of some sort. Interesting, interesting. Okay, I don't quite know what to do with it just yet. Mm, can we go anywhere else? Hmm. Hold on, hold on. There's another symbol there by the looks of it, but I can't seem to get at it. Reminds you of Realm of the Haunting, CG-wise. Hmm, it's been a long time since I played that game. Uh, I honestly don't remember what the graphics looked like. Uh, that well, but uh, yeah, that is the right sort of error, definitely. Um, hmm, there must be some way of none of these are interactive. Well, let's see, we have three white dots, three black dots, and three tumblers. So, hmm. What do we make of that? That's the question. Can't click this, can't click that. Numbers from zero through nine. Hmm, tricky, tricky. Um, I have played this game before, a long time ago, so I'm not bothered by spoilers. If anyone wants to, uh, what's it? If anyone wants to uh, give suggestions to puzzle solutions and so on, Plus, it'll keep the uh, the game going smoothly. I, I think I've just, I think I may have just clicked as to where we should look. You see, when I came in here, um, one of the first places that I looked was this rather cool mail slot. When I opened its mouth, uh, oh yes, it's the bell, it's the pull here. I saw the number twenty nine, and I did wonder whether that was something relevant. Uh, there's also there are also a couple of numbers here, which I'm going to just screenshot quickly. Um, some of these might be relevant, but I'm going to try the number 29 first. Seems like a good starting point at the least. 
would be nice if I could see the, where the hotspots were a little more easily, but that's a minor niggle. So let's try 0, 2, 9. No idea, but maybe there's more numbers around the place. There might be. Um, I've just... Oh, it was 29. Ha-ha! Not the most secure um, password, Windle not. Uh, 7, it says. Uh... Oh, okay, so we have a cog puzzle of some sort. Six, oh. We have so, only so many moves, okay. Uh, oh, hold on, I, th I think the clue for this um, is this lot. We have three white dots and three black dots. So, oh, I see, so we're supposed to get the white cogs up to the top and the black cogs to the bottom, okay. Should be able to do that without too much trouble. Oops. Who? I'm glad that didn't count as a move. What do you mean I can't put that there? Why can I not put that there? Ah, okay. So there's some rule here that I'm not observing, clearly. Oh, hmm, I wonder. Okay, so let's reset that. So maybe I have to use alternate cogs. No, I can't. It's, it refuses to let me do that. Very strange. Okay, well, let's move this here. Move that there. Uh, there we go. And now I can't move this one. Very strange. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Oh, okay, I think... Maybe I can't have... I can't put that there. I can't put that there. Can put that there. I can't, still can't put that there. There's something that I'm missing about this puzzle. I'm not quite sure what it is. Hmm. These all black, these all white, and we have two spare pegs. <laughs> May oh, you, I wonder, maybe what I'm supposed to do is not what I'd first thought. I can't put that there for some reason. I can't put that there. Can put that there. Hmm. Tricky. Well, it's uh, it's missing an endpoint, like like something the cogs move or turn. It is, um, but uh, yeah, it, there is no clear mechanism that it's supposed to service, is there? Um, it looks like it's just. Although that does raise the question: Why? Why are these cogs? Is there something to be read from that fact? I can't click on this, which is why I'm wondering, maybe we're supposed to have, you know, one here and one here. Oh, maybe we can't put them on when they would uh, create a non-functional... bit of uh, clockwork. See that? See that would... Hmm. 
hard to make out. Um, oops, let me have a check something quickly. Is the video blurred on your end, if you don't mind my asking? Um, it's not on my end. I'm hoping it's not on your end. It's not supposed to be. Um, if it is, then I might have messed up something in um, in OBS. Now, I'm seeing fairly sort of... No, the graphics. The graphics are hard to make out, you're saying. Well, the thing is, the graphics should be fairly, cr uh, fairly crisp in terms of sort of pixels. You should be able to see pixels. You, It shouldn't be blurred. Um, but I suppose um, it is a little low on contrast. No, they're not different sizes. They're, they're all the same size, as far as I can see. Hmm. Hum, 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 hum. Okay. I can't put it there. That, hmm. There goes that idea. I still, uh, 90s puzzles be 90s, yeah, yeah, definitely a 90s puzzle. Um, it, uh, looking at this, it definitely looks like we're supposed to get three white um, cogs on the top and three on the bottom, uh, and three black ones on the bottom, but it doesn't seem to like my actually doing that. Where, why did that work and some of the others not? See, why is that not working? Hmm. Okay, you know what? I actually have um, a hint system available to me. Uh, so I'm going to use it. I, I opened it up originally uh, for one particular puzzle that I, I don't know how to solve myself. And I just use a, a hint for that, that for one particular puzzle. Uh, but I'm just for the sake of um, keeping things moving, let me look. Um, let me look at this one. Um, ah, how do I solve the gear puzzle? I'm using UHS, Universal Hint System. Okay, you must swap the. This says here that you must swap the positions of the black and white gears in seven moves. Okay, so that's more or less what I thought I had to do. Um, okay, so. Top row. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So let me reset this quickly uh, once I get the game back. Okay. So according to this, I should move this to here. And then. Not you, you to here, then you to here, okay, and then here to here, and then here to here, and I suppose here and here, okay, great. Um, Hold on, let me just get get Twitch back. Uh, there we go. No shame in looking stuff up. Indeed, indeed, uh, it's, uh, considerably better than um, than getting stuck and you know getting bored. Um, so I don't know quite why that those moves worked and the ones that I was trying didn't, but we've done it. We've moved. We've we can move on now, and we get this actually rather nice. Uh, um, hourglass with a snake entwined around it. Nice indeed. Nice indeed. 
I think we'll find uh, something should have changed somewhere. Oops. What did I just do? Oh, for a moment there I thought the game had crashed. Uh, what have we changed and where is the question? Something changed here. Yeah, at first I thought they might be different shapes and I was just unable to see it. Ah, oh, yes, no. Uh, no, they were all identical save for their color. Um, hmm. Uh, sort of gotten, ah, gotten slightly stuck. Uh, there we go. Uh, hmm. I was, oops, hold on. Uh, can I go this way? No. I was sort of expecting a path to appear um, leading to this standing, uh, these, this set of standing stones. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, there it, it it did appear. I just didn't see it last time. Uh, previously, this is all very nice. There's another symbol. Print screen that quickly. Hmm. Okay. Well, we seem to have a puzzle here. Ah. Okay. Uh. Ah, I see. Okay, 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 okay. This is where my print screening comes in handy. So let me just pull up my pictures folder so that we don't have to go out and seek these, uh, seek out each of these. Now, each of these, I think we'll find that each of these um, symbols that we've found previously is on a color. So for example, um, looking at uh, my picture here, uh, see this one. What, Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's the color that we're, the color is a constant, the symbol swap. So orange had this one. Okay. And, uh, ah, okay. So green had, uh, this one, uh, which one? Sorry. Let me go look at my screenshot again. The one that looks a bit like an ammonite. Okay. There we go. That one. And, What looks like ah uh, red, I suppose, had a sort of bullseye. These are all things that I've been screenshotting as we've been exploring around. Oops, that was the one that we wanted. Hold on. Get back to that. There we go. And last but not least then, uh, right. This, this one, of course, has the plus sign. There we go. Nice. Hmm. Slightly sarcophagus shaped door. But all right. So, what will we find in the dark? Uh, it is very dark. Uh, I do not know whether I'm going the right way or... I'm just walking right now. Oh, I'm back at the beginning. Hmm. Awkward. So did I miss a turning somewhere? Uh, this way? Well, right sort of atmosphere for the uh, stream. And we're back at the beginning again. 
Hmm. Mazes, not my favorite ever. At least not like this. Uh, I actually quite like mazes just uh, sort of uh, in person, so to speak. Hmm. That is to say, uh, yeah, in in real life, so to speak, I actually quite like exploring mazes. Um, if I'm presuming that I have leisure for it um, and a maze available. Um, am I missing something here? Hmm. Most strange. Wondering whether I'm missing a hotspot somewhere. And uh, yes, it probably is about as dark for me as it is for you. See, at this point, there appear to be three ways that I could go. Can't be worse than the amazing mystery of the druid. Is that particularly bad? I, don't, I haven't played that. Well, what is so bad about that one? Could go that way. Can go that way. Can go that way. Must be missing something somewhere. Oh wait, hold on, what's this? Aha! No indication as to where to go, and on two occasions you have to go back the way you came. Yeah, that... That sounds like an annoying maze. And ah! Maybe if I'd turned the lights on, I might have been able to find my way a little better. I'm kind of amused that they actually allow you to wander about in the pitch black dark in this game. That is actually kind of neat. I like that. Aha! And now we have somewhere to go. Deeper, I do note. And I like this music. This is... Good ambiance, kind of ominous, kind of tense. Ooh, in an old-fashioned Egyptian, um, what would you call this, a bark, I suppose? On an underground lake. Ooh, nice Egyptian um, murals here. Intriguing. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of another point-and-click game called Isis uh, that I had when I was... Oh dear. Oh dear. Egyptian hieroglyphs explained. Okay. Uh, screenshot these. Okay, Akhenaten. So, okay, so various names. Let's just hope you have two coins for the ferryman. Indeed, indeed. Although, do we want to go where the ferryman would take us? Okay, so that stuff looks like it's going to be useful. Um, can't click on this. 
I fear this may be Professor Windlenot. Hmm. Uh, what I was saying is that uh, this uh, Egyptian themed section, um, this bark or whatever we're calling it, um, reminds me quite a bit of an old game called uh, Isis that I had when I was young, which was entirely Egyptian themed, um, but also a vehicle for Earth, the, the band Earth, Wind and Fire, which was quite neat. Yeah, it was a fun game, as I recall. Okay, so what do we do here? That's the question. Okay. Oh, that did a thing. Okay. Okay, so we can only have one of them engaged at a time. Oh, you think you remember that one? I, you're a little surprised to hear of someone else familiar with it. I remember it quite fondly myself. Uh, it was a fun little game. Not huge, but uh, enjoyable. Oh, and we've moved a bit. All right. Oh, this is a neat way of moving, I suppose. Oh, hi. I think we just had the first glimpse of one of the Ixupi. Yep, and we've just lost a chunk of our life. Hmm. That was one of the dark spirits that haunts this place, I'm afraid. And it just stole a chunk of our life force, I'm afraid. It was just Isis, not Serpent of Isis. The one that I'm thinking of. Oh, and I think we've arriven. Okay. Fifteen long years in this prison. You get out. Do not meddle in things beyond your understanding. You will pay for your curiosity. Dun dun dun. Danger. We are so weak. Already some of your life essence has been stolen. Yep. I was too old. Not fast enough. The Ixupi are so evil. I'm gathering. It's to find all the vessels. Because it seems only when they are united with their talismans do they have any power. My plan was to use them on the Ixupi before any more of them escape into the world. I believe they cannot resist the vessels as long as they're with the talismans and you approach directly. This vessel here is of no use to you, however. Its Ixupi is the one who robbed me of my essence. Sorry of such a belief. And they've ruined my museum. Hmm. Professor Windle, not alas has been dead for a long time. Uh, you mostly played the Broken Sword or Gabriel Knight games, you say, Hravok. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I've played those as well, also very good games. I'm actually a big fan of, Bro of, of Gabriel Knight. Uh, less so of Broken Sword, I'll confess, but very much of Gabriel Knight. Angry Chicken Pot here used to have an Ixupi in it. So, we've now been officially told the name of our antagonists in this game, the Ixupi dark spirits uh, that can be contained in um, pots like the one that we just saw, as long as you have both the pot and the lid. And uh, if not contained, they are, as we've seen, quite dangerous. They will steal our life. Hello there. Oh, we have a puzzle. Uh, somewhat Mesoamerican, I suppose, or South American, I'm not sure. Puzzle. Ah, I see, it's one of these, okay. Right, but what are we trying to do is the question. Okay, so we can't move that. We can't move that because, okay, so this moves four. 
The Broken Sword art style was more your thing back when you were young. Okay, that's fair enough. I'll, I, I came to Broken Sword fairly late, um, and I, I wasn't hugely you know, I'm a fan of the, the art style of the first couple of Broken Sword games. The later ones I wasn't too bothered by. Uh, what am I doing here is the question. Well, I'm not trying to get them all on individual rows and columns because I think I have achieved that. Played it on PlayStation, really. A, a point and click on PlayStation, how, how did you manage that? Okay, we're not trying to get them all in one column. What is our goal here? Is there some indication somewhere? Oh, I see. We're trying to get them all in a diagonal. Okay. I am with you. Oh, and there's now only one of these. That's handy. Okay, so this one won't help us at all. Okay, well, that's fine. Okay, that's good. Right, and that should do it. Nice. I like that puzzle. Use the D-pad as mouse and start for menu and X for clicking. The D-pad as mouse just sounds awkward to me, I will admit. But how did you find it? Uh, did you enjoy playing a point and click that way? Okay, well, we're in the lift. Do we have any lift music? No, we don't. What a bad lift this is. No music. No girl from Ipanema or whatever else you might play. So oh well, we're here and we're in the museum proper. You learned it that way, didn't have a PC when growing up. Well, that's fair, that's fair. Um, I've always been more of a PC gamer, so... Um, okay, so if we want to use the lift... Um, if we want to use the lift, we have to solve that puzzle again, which suggests that we might end up wanting to use the lift again at some stage. And we're in an office. Fully converted to PC around World of Warcraft release. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Ooh, what's this? Expedition forms to search for Atlantis, and someone wants to explore uh, whatever part of America this is. And it looks like various places um, have been marked. Atlantis solved, it says. <clears throat> Bimini AP, the lost city of Atlantis may yet be found if Dr. John Payermo and Sir Hubert T. Windlenot have their way. Dr. Payermo maintains that Bimini, Bimini Island is the western tip of the much larger continent of Atlantis that once covered the entire area known as the Bermuda Triangle. Previous research has been focused on the west side of the island where marble columns and an underwater road have been discovered. Sir Hubert T. Windlenot, second son of Sir William Windlenot, Earl of Runcorn, is funding the new expedition. Now residing in the United States, Professor Windlenot, as he prefer now prefers to be called, has funded many archaeological expeditions and will soon be opening a museum to house the artifacts he has collected. The museum seeks to explain not only the mystery of Atlantis, but many other unexplained mysteries, so Windlenot explained. Okay. So that's how he got this uh, museum started in his search for Atlantis. Okay. Can't get a good look at it, but this is, looks like a model of the little uh, Egyptian bark that we were just uh, traveling on. Do you like the fellow's style? Aha! And so we have, this is the lid of one of those Ixupi um, jars. Now here's one of the, uh, the tricky things about this game. We can only carry one item at a time. <clears throat> May 14, 1972. Who is this? Okay. My dear Hubert, I want to thank you for resigning from the Royal Society and avoiding the shame of being publicly dismissed. While our friends have not forgotten how you embarrassed us, they at least have the courtesy to refrain from mentioning you in, in uh, mentioning your indiscretions in public. Had the Griffin been the only lapse, I think Sir Brown would have dismissed it. But you were constantly presenting things like curses or, of tombs, a mummified cyclops, proof of life in outer space, and a unicorn. I know you felt slighted by your colleagues, and that was why you left England. But Hubert, 
your reputation... Uh, hold on, I've lost my place. Uh, your reputation is that of a trickster, not a scientist. I'm worried that our son might not be accepted into the proper social circles. Which brings me to the point of this letter. It would be better for Geoffrey if you cease all communications with him. This future is f sorry. His future is far too important to risk jeopardizing it with dreams of a father digging up some myth from a desert tomb. I trust that you will do the honourable thing and leave Geoffrey alone while you play with your museum. With regards, Mary Mary Elizabeth Windlenot. Hmm, unfortunate. You still wait for that eye to blink. Oh, yes. Actually, hadn't noticed that this had turned into an eye. And a unicorn. We'll be seeing more than a unicorn. Okay, so an eye allows us to examine what we found. Uh, how do we... I saw it turn a moment ago. Uh, how did I make it turn? That's the... Oh, I see. I just move the mouse hither or thither and we rotate it. That's actually quite nice uh, graphics for, uh, for this, uh, for the age. Okay. So, our Professor Windlenot has trouble um, in his personal life, it would seem. Oop. Whew. Let me just catch my breath quickly. Uh, I Actually, I'm not a, I'm, as you might know, might have noticed, not exactly a trained, um, What's it, a voice actor? So I do. Uh, I don't think I breathe properly when I do some some of those readings. So actually, get can get a little lightheaded at times. So in order to avoid that, <clears throat> Windlenot does it again. Sir Hubert Windlenot has been asked to withdraw his name from the Royal Society. This la this latest request by the Society was prompted by Windlenot's presentation of a griffin found in a tar pit in Turkey. Sir John Brown, president of the Society, made the following statement. Sir Hubert Windlenot is infamous in the 20th century for his capacity to embrace even the tallest of tales as proof of his own theories. This so-called griffin was fabricated from a pterodactyl, a saber-toothed tiger, and a raptor, all found conveniently in the same pit. Ooh, actually I'm getting a little lightheaded now. He's a charlatan, not an archaeologist, and should not be considered one. You'll remember, dear reader, that only last year Windlenot founded a... Ooh, hold on. Hmm. Excuse me, I uh, have to take a break, break from reading this. Oh, catch my breath. You will remember... Right, let's pick that up again. You will remember, dear reader, that only last year Windlenot founded a, funded sorry, a major expedition to search for the entrance to a subterranean world and tried to prove that Stonehenge was built by space aliens. The, this writer admits that Windlenot's theories sound a bit far-fetched, but I for one hope he continues his research. Uh, let's just skim over this. I presume this is our professor. Mount Pleasant Mayor. Let's see, a bunch of people in the groundbreaking of Professor Windlenot's Museum of the Strange and Unusual. Scheduled to open spring of 1961. Oops, I think I clicked. I shouldn't. Okay. And it looks like uh, <laughs> we all know our lizard overlords built Stonehenge. Of course, of course. Let's see. Let me just skim over this quickly. Um... Looks like it was initially quite well received. Uh, he was going to build a museum that would bring the wonders of the world to their little town. They were quite hopeful about it. Hope soon died, however, when the professor announced that only outside contractors would be used to keep the secrets, in inverted commas, of the museum from being exposed. Uh, let's see. Then, just yesterday, he announced that the museum, which was already five years overdue, would require at least another three years to complete. I, for one, am tired of having my hopes and dreams for a better Mount Pleasant dashed on the rocks of Professor Windlenot's museum. I believe it will never open. Oh, this is the son, Geoffrey Windlenot. Uh, we'll be attending Oxford in the fall, so that I see our professor has been keeping uh, keeping track of his son. Uh, and apparently, he's, uh, there's a tradition of the Windlenots going to Oxford. Uh, we'll be following in his grandfather's footsteps. So, William Windlenot, Earl of Runcorn, and study banking. Okay. Those look interesting. Artifacts sold. Okay, personal possessions of Siegfeld Schwartz. Uh, would see have been sold to uh, Professor Windlenot. Um... He was interested in never in never resolved rumours surrounding the mysterious death of Mr. Schwartz. Ah, 
When questioned, the buyer said, I believe his demise is related to pottery vessels that I hope are still included among his possessions. These vessels have reportedly been linked to the deaths of several individuals, each found shriveled and mummified. I am interested in the vessels from an archaeological viewpoint, however. Ah, I think these vessels might be our Ixupi um, vessels. Ah, what do we have here? Hmm. And the book Egyptian Hieroglyphics explained not in its place in the library, but it's down here on the office floor. And we found it below with him, I presume it was. Oddly, one of the pages is torn out. Indeed, we did see that. And I feel the presence. I'm not sure. I must investigate the second floor. So, a little more uh, background to what's going on here. Uh, there's been mention of some missing children as well, I think, to recall. Um, Missy, um, and it seems like uh, one of them may have released these Ixupi. Hmm, okay. Can I get at this jacket, I wonder? Yeah, here we go. These are the missing children, I'm guessing. Well, teenagers. Is this the boy who's been following me? Right here. It looks like Windle not has written. Tornado hits local trailer park. Let's see. Beth Nelson and Merrick Campbell are the two who went missing. Uh, let's see. Da 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 da. See, Mr. Campbell says that he knows that there's been foul, foul play. Merrick would never run away as he plans to attend Harvard next fall. Okay. Yes, Mr. Campbell. Um... Dee -dee 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 -dee. No one knows what's happened to them, but I think that we likely enough do. Okay. Oh. oh, my dearest Geoffrey, I was deeply gratified to receive your letter. After eight years, I was afraid you would never forgive me. Your letter, however, gave me hope that I might once again be part of your life. You may not be aware of this, but your mother felt it best that I distance myself from you. She was perhaps correct. When I first dreamed of the museum, you were to be uh, uh, wait a, a part of it. Twenty years have passed and it is still incomplete. I do feel, however, with the Siegfeld Schwarz, uh, Siegfeld Schwarz acquisition and an upcoming trip to Zimbabwe, my collection will be complete. Please come view the museum and tell me what you think. Yours is the one p opinion that I treasure most in all the... Uh... Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Ooh, don't like that noise. I don't think we want to go near that fireplace while it's making that noise. 
Ooh, but we do might want to go into this little place. Oh, another of these lifts with one of these puzzles. Okay, but first let's let's keep exploring. Um, ooh, yeah, we don't. I think that that noise means that one of the Xupi is in that fireplace. Ooh, workshop might be handy. Let's see. What do we have here? Hmm. Bones. Makes sense for a museum, of course, to have some stuff. Lots of bones, apparently, in this case. Wondering whether anything happens when we turn the key. Hmm. Doesn't seem to do. Okay, that's fair. Can't do anything with those, apparently. The missing axe, interestingly. And of course, the requisite jars full of unpleasant things. Uh, none of which seem to be interactive. Oh, hello there. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that also means that there's an Ixupi in there. Ah, here we are. Possible basilisk. Bone fragments found in Nigeria in 1974. Interesting. Oh, uh, hmm, I see. So I'm guessing that this is... I wonder whether that's a code. I wonder whether we have to open... Yes, I think we have to open certain of these. So let me pull that up as a screenshot. Uh, which means we want... Uh, well, I want to do some juggling of my windows to start with. Okay, so we want, oops, didn't want to click on that. 241, 109, uh, 342A, 65B, ah, 65B, 490, 147, I think that is, is that all of them? I think that's all of them. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me just check. So 241, check. 109, check. 147, check. 65B, check. 342A, check. Uh, hmm. Maybe I'm supposed to have all but. Wait, let me just... Zoom in there. No, there's nothing relevant there. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Let's try the opposite then. Oops. Oh, is it ten o'clock already? Uh, oops. Didn't mean to click that. So let's try closing all of the possible basilisk drawers and opening all of the others. Oh, that seems to have done it. Was it 490? Uh, it was and I think we got it actually. Um, so let's try the key now. Well, we just did a thing. Oh, oh, aha. As you can see, once again, we can only take one at a time. We now have a snake-headed one. But, and we will want to remember that that is there. Uh, we have to remember the locations for these. 
Um, these little items. Yep, someone's still in there. But anyway, let's step out of the, the office and into the actual museum as a son. Must be a pain to get around in that house. Yes, I, I imagine so. Um, you have to solve a puzzle to get at any, just about anything. Um, which, in fact, uh, we just heard Professor Windle not uh, bemoaning, um, saying that he didn't realize when he set up the puzzles that, um, that they might become a hindrance. So what do we have here? Um, uh, I want to click on the... Uh, Oh, there's the axe at any rate. Ah, that's what I want. Transforming masks. The cannibal society of the uh, Quackutal Indians of the Northwest American coast wore these spectacular transforming masks during the winter initiation ceremonies. These masks represent birds and monsters associated with the man-eating spirit. It is neat. Oh, and we found an Ixupi pot. Oops. More self-aware than Resident Evil 1 through 3 ever was, indeed. Neat. Okay. So we have one of the pots now, but we don't have the lid that matches it. As you can see, it's a round lid. It has a round base with a little sort of notch. Um, so this is part of the trick of this game. We have to... Find the right matching parts. Ooh, this is neat. Ooh. See if we can get a uh, fountain running. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. I'm not sure what that's achieved for us, but hey, we have a fountain. Yeah, none of this seems to be clickable, so it might just be for decoration. Wait, hold on. Oh, I thought this panel looked different, but I can't seem to open it. Hmm. Might be related to that. Always stay hydrated, indeed. In fact, let me have a drink quickly. Ah, very nice. Ah, and a library. There's something missing. Ah, this is where Egyptian hieroglyph hieroglyphs explained used to live. Can't seem to open this even though I can examine it, which is slightly suspect. Can open that, but there's nothing there. Can't store my Xupi pot in there, apparently. Uh, game. Game. Oh, there we go. So, what else? Quite a nice illustration of a tower or some such there. None of these books seem clickable. Okay, can I put my... I can actually put down my Xupi pot in there. That's good to know. Um, actually, I wonder whether you can do that with that other one and I just misclicked in some way. Hmm. Because it would be handy if we knew where the things were. So I'm wondering whether this isn't meant to be a storage area of sorts. Uh, not seeming to be able to open... All of them. Oh, hey. Okay. Oh, that is a lot to read. Okay, it's about the Xubi, so it's important. But I think I'll probably come try to remember to come back to that in the next stream. Uh, not feeling quite up to all that reading right now. Ooh, a bit of a backstage area. Okay, we'll come back to this. I want to explore some of the 
museum proper first. I want to finish up with this library and then I want to go to uh, some of the actual exhibit some more of the actual exhibits. Because those for me are some of the most fun. Okay, I don't know why I moved that. Maybe there's something up here now. Aha. Ooh, aha. And another Ixupi um, lid, uh, pot lid. Uh, can't really see much other than it appears to have a round base. So, not terribly useful for the pot that we have. Okay. So, I suppose my question then. First of all, that looks very much like there's a path. There. Oh, okay, it's not. Okay, I thought there was a path in here for a moment, but okay. So now, can I can I store this here because that would be very handy? Come on, let me put this down, please. It would seem not. Okay, that's not a real storage area, I'm afraid. Pity. Now, uh, let's continue exploring the museum itself. The items in this case were found in a mine ceremonial cave in British Honduras. The jade skull is one of the largest jade items in the world. Well, that sounds neat. Oops, I just went straight past it. Can I look at that? Because that actually sounds quite interesting. Alas, it won't let us actually look at that case. Pity. But that's fine. Um, let's see, where do we want to go first? That's the question. Anything interesting here? Oh, a pamphlet. Always take a, mu a pamphlet from the museum. Welcome to the world's most unusual museum. Share the excitement of the explorers of the past as you discover the strange and wonderful world of the ancients. Solve puzzles meant to confound sages of the past. Here's your first one. Scattered throughout the museum are hundreds of amazing items. Find the following exhibits. A giant eagle's nest, a viking burial, myth of the werewolf, legend of the Darrows, tomb of the Ixupi, two-headed Celtic god. And I'm going to screenshot that because these skulls, these colored skulls seem likely to be some sort of puzzle hint. Interesting. Uh, ah, so we do that. Okay, it doesn't look like there's anything more here. Yeah. So in that case, I think let's start by going this way. Ooh, there's a nice big spider. Dr. Stanley Barlov, I think, Mount Pleasant Drugs, Merrick Campbell, Campbell, sorry, inhale two puffs by mouth every six hours as needed for asthma, shake well before using. So, looks like uh, Merrick Campbell was indeed here and dropped his inhaler, which uh, suggests that he wasn't in best of positions. Weighing two tons, this nest, built by a pair of bald eagles in Georgia, is by no means the largest known nest. The nests of the Mali fowl of Australia are much larger, weighing over 10 times as much. So this is all one nest. Now I saw those skulls there. Um, oh, hello. This is a slightly dumpy looking stegosaur. Oh, there's a button. Ah. 60 foot giant squid that can pull a small fishing boat into the depths of the sea. To the two inch poison dart frog that carries enough poison to kill 1,500 people. Nothing is stranger than the animal kingdom. Is it any wonder that the ancients worshipped and feared these strange beasts? This is a genuinely neat museum, I think. Oh, Ooh, no, no, no. 
Oh. There is indeed a Shivers 2. I think it's quite different to this one. Ah, oh, and there goes a chunk of my life force. Lovely. Ah, oh, I didn't pay attention to the noise. Ah. Found in a tar pit in Turkey were the bones of an unusual animal that baffled paleontologists. They decided the bones were from three animals. The wings of a pterodactyl, the body of a saber-toothed tiger, and the head of a raptor. Never once did they consider the obvious, that it was a griffin, written about in ancient literature and now extinct. And uh, there's our reconstructed griffin. There's another door, but first, let's look this way. Ah. And, uh, it's the nest. Don't know whether there's anything that we can do in the nest. Oops. It's not looking like it, but that is neat. Oops. Uh, where am I? Oh, there we go. Hey, and a Triceratops. Didn't even see the Triceratops. I didn't even notice the Triceratops. Time. Here we have some more dinosaurs of one sort or another. Some tusks. Obelisk. Ah. Four miles under the ocean's surface, while searching through the sunken wreckage of the British vessel HMS Whitmore, this rare specimen of the starfish Profundalbe was, was claimed to have been found. It was wrapped around the skull of one of the members of the crew. Hmm. Killer starfish. Now, these skulls look interesting. Ah, I thought so. It turns red, so... Where's our clue here? So, according to that pamphlet, the giant eagle, giant eagle's nest should be purple. Oops. That's blue, green, orange. Okay, so I presume blue is what they meant. Okay, I don't know whether that was a good noise or a bad noise, but it was a noise. Ah. You are now entering the unfathomable depths of the sea, where countless ships have sunk taking with them untold riches. The wisdom known only to the ancients may also reside here, in the lost city of Atlantis. Nice. I would absolutely tour a museum like this, by the way. This looks like it would be a lot of fun to visit. Hmm. I can look at this one wall here, which suggests to me that maybe there's a secret panel here. Um, ooh, crystals. I like crystals. What do we have here? Edward Casey, one of America's most renowned psychics, gave a description of an instrument made of quartz crystals with which the Atlanteans harnessed the energy of the sun's rays. Unable to control the power of this machine, they eventually blew themselves up. Lovely. Well, let's uh, step carefully around that, I suppose. And uh, how do I get out of here? Here we go. Ah, Poseidon, son of Zeus, brother of Hades, the Greek god of seas and water, was also the patron god of Atlantis. Earthquakes and tidal waves were attributed to this turbulent sea god, who was known to the Romans as Neptune. There he is with a, an orb. Oh, interesting. Ah, oh, ah. Uh, huh. I think we're supposed to have gotten uh, something from that map. Hmm. That map in the, the office. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, who? That sound suggests there's likely an Ixupi in there. Hello. Who's this? Oh, Colossus of Rhodes. One of the seven wonders of the world, the Colossus of Rhodes was built to honor Helios, the Greek sun god. 
The legs of the giant statue spanned the city harbour so that ships could pass beneath it. The 120-foot bronze statue was toppled by an earthquake in 226 BC. They are indeed <laughs> sneaky. Um, Ravok, they are indeed quite sneaky. Hmm. Sirens are... Ah. In Greek mythology, the sirens were huge birds with women's faces who lured sailors onto dangerous rocks by their sweet singing. The only man to ever hear their singing and live was Odysseus, who had his men tied to the mast so he would not jump into the rocks to join them. The Argonauts were saved from the sirens by the musician Orpheus, who drowned their singing with, the mu with music from his lyre, which was more beautiful still. Do you dare hear, listen to the siren's song? Ooh. That looks like a puzzle hint. No, that is pretty. Not quite sure it's jump out of your boat pretty, but it's it's pretty. It's pretty pretty. Okay, uh, hold on. I think I want to go out to the office and pick up and have a look at that map again. Something sounds remarkably unhappy here. By the way, I just want to look at this one that we picked up here. What sort of base? Yeah, this one has a completely different base. So not what we're looking for. All right, well, we'll carry it around with us for now. We haven't found any matching, any ob uh, obvious matches amongst our lids and pots thus far. Um, ah, this is, um, where's my hotspot? There we go. So this is what I wanted to look at. So I'm guessing it's this, 20, uh, what's it, uh, degrees north and 75 degrees west. So 20 north, 75 west. I'm going to try that quickly. 20 north, 75 west. There's even a hint that we should be looking at the map if you look at the similar map on the floor. Okay, so we said 20 north and 75 west. There we go. Oh, that's a neat trick. I like this museum. So what have we done? Aha! New soupy pot by the looks of it. Um, one with, yeah, you know, a sort of diamond shaped lid or square lid, depending on which way you look at it. And, oh, a map. I'm going to screenshot that quickly. Could be a cool escape room type of thing. Yes, it could, could be a pretty cool escape room type of thing. So, yeah, so uh, we're just off of here. We've just come out of Strange Beasts. This would lead into Amazing Plants, which looks like it's probably that greenhouse we saw on the side of the, the museum from, out, from outside. Uh, the Egyptian section is the theater. There's a stairway to a tower up to the second floor. The library, of course, we've seen. Here's that backstage area. The museum office and the workshop. And, of course, here's some... Uh, Here's the second floor. We have tombs and curses. I can't. I don't know what's written here. Myths and legends, gods, and I think that might be religious items. Stairway to tower still there. Shaman and funeral rites. Uh, not sure about this. It says strange. I think strange inventions. What that says? Planetarium. Man's inhumanity to man. And the puzzle room, bedroom and study, clock tower room, and a clock. Oops, I did actually forget to screenshot a couple of those. Uh, 
just easier to reference them if I have them as screenshots rather than having to come back here. Uh, okay. Oop, there we go. You know, Mysteries of the Deep, a maze, a subterranean world, an underground lake, and a, and a mechanical room. Uh, interesting. Okay, so. Well, let's take a look at... Uh, Let's take a look at that other, the, the uh, what am I look, saying, this uh, greenhouse that was mentioned. Modern tricks for older problems. Yeah. Ooh, button. You have stepped into the world of amazing plants. For centuries, plants have been used to beautify man's surroundings. For food. Oh, it fades away. Sorry. You Bring that back up. The world of amazing plants. For centuries, plants have been used to beautify man's surroundings. For food. Shelter. <laughs> Welcome to the Twilight Zone. It does sound a bit like that, doesn't it? Dun dun dun. Right, well, let's see what plants we have here. Ooh. Some of these. Are any of these Ixupi pots? That one is. This one has a triangular. Um, what's it? Uh, thingy. Uja. What's it? Base to its lid. Quite neat. We have some sort of city. Don't think it was built on rock and roll, but uh, it is neat. Naturally, most of the plants have died um, since there's been no upkeep to this place in what was it, 15 years? Not finding much to click on here. Wall pots over there. Pile of sand, which might be relevant when we're hunting Ixupi. These don't seem to be relevant. Okay. Well, we found a new pot. Um. Interesting, this pot's just noting, ha noticing has a sort of snake-like pattern on it. I wonder whether it has a snake head um, lid. We did, hmm, we did see a snake head um, lid, didn't we? <laughs> now you have the Twilight jingle stuck in your head. Oh dear. Uh, I never actually watched the Twilight Zone over much. Um, I might have, I think I've seen a couple of episodes of it. I did end up watching quite a bit of The Outer Limits, however. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, whoops. Where did I leave that snake head? Um, lid? Now, that's the question. Uh, you don't remember where I left that snake head lid, do you? Do you? Um... Oh, The Outer Limits, that's how you found the Twilight Zone. Okay, that's not the snakehead lid. Uh, interesting. How did the, the Outer Limits lead you to the Twilight Zone, if I may ask? Let's see. I do quite remember the, uh, the at least some of the intro from the 1990s, I think it was, version of the, of the Outer Limits. Um, do not adjust your television set. We are now in control of the transmission. We control the horizontal and the vertical. We can expand a single image. Um, what was it? We can deluge you with a thousand channels or expand a single image to crystal clarity and beyond. Um, 
something that you are about to experience the awe and wonder that reaches from the deepest inner mind to the outer limits. Ah, and it's not a snake head. It's in fact this bull head um, lid that we got uh, the first time around. So we now have our first complete exupi pot. And I think we'll find that I can yeah, you know, store the thing entirely now, which is good. So we now know that um, we now know that uh, when when we make when, when when we what am I trying to say? When we match um, an exupi uh, pot to an exupi pot lid, uh, we can um, store them together so that we can come back for them. We can put together pots and lids even if we don't need them immediately, store them and come back for them rather than try to store them separately. Um, oh, you think it was a behind the scenes or something? Interesting. Hmm. Uh, all right, so let's uh, come back here. And this is where the book on the Exupi is. Okay, but I'm not going to read it right this moment. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is, it is getting quite late. I'm going to save. Uh, save and play. Auto save is on, I do see, so I don't know quite when it saves. But still, I'm going to call the stream here, I think. Um, yes, I hope you've had fun. I very much have. I'm definitely enthused to get back to this again next week. Ooh, pardon me, a bit of gas there. Um continue hunting for the Ixupi. Thank you for streaming, you say. Thank you for watching. It's much appreciated. So, with that, I will say stay well, goodbye, and thank you for watching. Goodbye. Even he says goodbye. <laughs>